I'm calling this uh, very interesting panel. Would you please take your seat? First of all, I'd like And what an honor to be uh, chairing and moderating this very, very distinguished panel, uh, which I'm very proud to say that uh, you can only see at AUIS and at the Soleimani Forum. So uh, I would like to congratulate AUIS, congratulate IRIS, and of course our chairman uh, for, uh, for this opportunity and this institution that has been bringing together uh, the, the minds from uh, policy, policy makers, industry leaders, and political leaders together to exchange ideas and discuss uh, solutions and ways forward. Today's um, pan to, to, this session uh, is on uh, energy policy and financial crisis. We're very fortunate to have uh, both minister, the Federal Minister of Oil, uh, Dr. Adil Abdul Mahdi, and the uh, KRG Minister of Natural Resources, Dr. Ashti Harami. We're also very fortunate to have uh, the Iraqi Federal Finance Minister, Kagoshar Zebari, and uh, the KRG uh, Finance Minister, Kag Rebaz, and the U.S. Ambassador, Ambassador Jones, as well as Ben Van Havlen, who is the managing editor for Iraq Oil Report, one of the best sources on Iraq oil news. The uh, subtitles for, for this panel would be on, obviously, the status of the Iraq and KRG oil relations, as well as the status of the economy. And uh, we'll also try to look at the way forward by uh, asking questions of this distinguished panel about structural reform and the way forward. The format would be, uh, we start with the energy dossier, so to speak, and then we segue into the uh, financial sector, and then we'll give an opportunity to, uh, to Ambassador Jones and uh, Ben Van Havlen to, uh, to offer uh, commentary. I will ask each panelist two questions, uh, and then each panelist will have seven minutes to comment on the questions, and then we'll open it up to Q&A. So, to uh, His Excellency uh, Dr. Adil Abdul Mahdi, I think the big question uh, on everyone's mind is, what is the update on the negotiations between the federal government and the KRG? If you could offer us uh, the, the latest update on that. And what do you think are the prospects of turning this temporary cooperative agreement that was signed between KRG and Baghdad into a more permanent and long-term uh, negotiated uh, settlement. Uh, and, and maybe it's also time to ask about the, uh, the status of the national hydrocarbons law. Are we going to use this period of honeymoon uh, that there is uh, more understanding between KRG and Baghdad to focus on passing the National Hydrocarbons Law, which many see as uh, the solution to uh, the ongoing discussions and debates and disagreements between both sides. Please. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Awalan, I have an ashkur munadhami ada al-tada wa ala rasihim al-akh al-ustad barham salih وأن أحيي من هنا حكومة أقليم كردستان وأتمنى للأستاذ والأخ والمعلم الكبير المام جلال الصحة والشفاء والعافية السريعة في الحقيقة يعني سأجيب على الأسئلة لكن كان هناك نقاط عديدة كان لا لا بأس أنا أجيب على الأسئلة وأضمنها ما كنت لا تخافوا ليست كل الأوراق سأقرأها هي مجرد إشارات أو تذكير لبعض رؤوس الأقلام واقع الحال بالنسبة إلى اتفاق الاتفاق مع الإقليم هو تعلمون نحن قسمنا هذا الملف إلى عدة مراحل المرحلة الأولى كانت مرحلة ما سميناه بناء الثقة أو إعادة العلاقات بعد قطيعة طويلة من الوقت فكانت أن نتسلم من الإقليم 150 ألف برميل مقابل 500 مليون دولار يدفع إلى الإقليم 
وهذا حقيقة تم في الشهرين الأخيرين من العام الماضي وسار بشكل جيد سار بشكل جيد وفعلا تسلمنا من الإقليم ما يقارب هذه الكمية معدلها اليوم قد يكون 148 ألف برميل تسلمتها الحكومة الاتحادية من الكيارجي من الإقليم الاتفاق الثاني نحن أسميناه اتفاق الموازنة لأن يعني كنا في نهاية العام وكان يجب أن ندخل في اتفاق في تحديد سعر النفط وكميات النفط وبدون احتساب كميات النفط المسلمة من الإقليم والقابل للتصدير تحت غطاء الحكومة الاتحادية لم يكن بالإمكان إعداد الموازنة لذلك توصلنا إلى اتفاق أن نتسلم من الإقليم كمعدل كمعدل يومي لعام 2015 550 ألف برميل 300 ألف برميل تأتي من كركوك و250 ألف برميل تأتي من الإقليم لم نكن نتوقع أن الإقليم يسلم 550 ألف برميل منذ اليوم الأول لعام 2015 لكن وضع جدول حصل بعض الارتباك في بدايات شهر كانون الثاني كانت الكميات المستلمة أقل بكثير من المتوقع مما كان سيصح سيصعب مهمة اللحاق بالمعدل اليومي ال 550 لكن الإخوة في الإقليم بذلوا جهد طيب وارتفعت ارتفعت الكميات إلى درجة أقل مما هو موجود في الجداول لكنها كميات تجاوزت أو اقتربت يعني اليوم وصلت معدلات في شباط كان المعدل 306 ألف برميل وفي كانون الثاني كان 153 ألف برميل كمعدل يومي ما استلم من الإقليم وفي آذار الأيام السبعة الأولى لا, لا أمتلك الإحصائيات الأخرى 248 ألف برميل يجب أن أشير هنا أن جزء مهم من هذا الذي يسلم إلى الإقليم يأتي من باب قرقر يعني يأتي أيضا من حقول لا تزال تعمل تحت إشراف الحكومة الاتحادية وكركوك أخذت كشيء مطلق 300 ألف برميل فبالتالي هذه هذه الكميات التي نستلمها كمعدلات يومية الجداول التي قدمت إلينا تقول بشيء أكثر من هذا يعني ما لدينا في الجداول يصل إلى حوالي 350 ألف برميل ما يجب أن نستلمه كمعدل يومي في في آذار الإخوة يبذلون جهد في هذا الاتجاه هناك بعض المشاكل الفنية في الآبار هناك لجان مشتركة للمرة الأولى سواء في جيهان أو في فيش خابور أو كذلك في الحقول الثلاثة في في كركوك باي حسن وآفانا وبابا غرغور فهناك جهد مشترك كبير هناك صعوبات هناك أعمال تخريب أيضا حصلت في الأنابيب في الجانب التركي هناك جهد مشترك جيد لكن يجب إذا أردنا وأنا واثق أننا سنصل إلى نهايات طيبة لهذا الاتفاق يجب أن نبذل جهود أكثر فأكثر لا أريد أن ألوم أحد سواء الحكومة الاتحادية وسدادها للمستحقات أو حكومة الإقليم وتسليمها الكميات اللازمة يجب أن نكون جادين وشفافين وواضحين ونحن نتكلم بصراحة من مع الإخوة لا توجد أسرار والمجاملات هي عندما نشرب الشاي ونتغذى سويا لكن في الجلسات هناك مباشرية وصراحة وكلام واضح وبالقلم العريض <تصفيق> هذا فيما يخص الاتفاقات إما فيما يخص المستقبل ففيما يخص المستقبل كل شيء حقيقة يكمن هنا يكمن في المضي قدما في هذه الاتفاقات نحن نعتقد أن أحد أسباب المشاكل التي تراكمت في كردستان هي غياب قانون النفط والغاز أو على الأقل غياب الإطار التشريعي الكامل لتنظيم هذه المسألة ليس فقط مع الإقليم حتى مع المحافظات الأخرى المنتجة للنفط هناك مشكلة إطار تشريعي ينظم هذه المسائل كل شيء اليوم يبنى على تفسير غالبا ما يكون منفرد من طرف واحد للمواد 111 112 من الدستور الدستور في المادتين يصر أن يكون العمل مشترك بين الحكومة الاتحادية 
والحكومة المحلية سواء كانت إقليم أو محافظة للأسف الشديد هذا لم يحصل في الحالتين يعني لكي لا نضع الآن نلقي مجرد الاتهامات واللوم وإلى آخره هذا لا يحصل من 2003 إلى 2008 كانت هناك فرصة طيبة أن نمضي قدما في تشريع قانون النفط والغاز لكننا لم نقم بذلك ثم بعد 2008 وبعد بدء الانتاج في اقليم كردستان من طقطق بقى بالامكان ان نصل الى اتفاقات وحصلت اجتماعات كثيره ومحاضر جلسات كثيره لكن بسبب التوتر السياسي او ضعف الثقه او كثير من الامور المرتبطه بهذا الامر لم نصل الى اتفاق الى ان توقفت توقف انتاج كركوك بالكامل انطلاقا من اذار 2014 بسبب تخريب انابيب الموصل وكان حقيقه عمل الاخوه في مد الانابيب في كردستان هو عمل افاد كثير اليوم في انقاذ كركوك وانتاج كركوك وبدون هذه الانابيب كان سيكون من الصعب مواصله الانتاج في كركوك خصوصا بعد توقف محطه بيجي عن الانتاج. تعذرني على المقاطعه دكتور يعني هل هناك مفاوضات جديدة حول قانون؟ نعم آه هذا ما كان نحو. يجب أن نصل إليه نحن قررنا وقلنا بعد الاتفاق على الموازنة بستة أشهر ثم قيل حتى بأربعة أشهر يجب أن نجلس سوية وهذه هي المرحلة الثالثة التي نعم. يجب أن نتكلم عنها آه نجلس سوية أولا لحسن كثير من المتعلقات والأمور المتوقفة في المرحلة السابقة من مستحقات لهذا الطرف أو لذاك الطرف وكذلك لنضع الترتيبات النهائيه في قضايا الانتاج، العقود، التصدير الى اخره، هناك مشاكل كثيره. فبالتالي يجب ان نجلس سويه الان، ومن هنا اهميه ان نضي قدما في هذه الاتفاقات، الاتفاق ليس فقط اتفاق نفطي، نحن نرفض ان نتعامل مع هذه القضيه وكان وكانما نشتري نفط كردستان، لا، كردستان كما نعبر جميعا سواء الاخوه في الاقليم او نحن هي جزء من العراق ونريد ان نتعامل حقيقه وليس لفظا بهذه الاتجاهات وهذه تحتاج جديه كبيره واصرار كبير مهما سيكون مستقبل العراق بعد اعوام قادمه لكن العراق اليوم بلد موحد وهو يتعامل يحارب يقاتل وزاراته السياديه كل شيء هو لديه الاطار الاتحادي العام نعم فيه تشوبه كثير من العراقيل كثير وهذا امر طبيعي في اي تجربه حديثة لكن يجب أن نسير قدما وهذا فيه مصلحة الجميع أكيد. لا أكيد. توجد أي مصلحة بانفراد أي طرف بهذا الموضوع وأعتقد أن نحن ندرك أهمية كردستان للعراق أهمية كردستان لبغداد وأعتقد الإخوة الكرد أيضا يدركون أهمية بغداد لهم بغداد ستبقى العاصمة الأهم بالنسبة إلى الكرد العراقيين العاصمة الأهم التي ممكن فعلا أن تتطور فيها كردستان ويتطور فيها شعب كردستان في إطار اتحاد حقيقي الاتحاد إلى حد الآن ليس حقيقي بمعنى الكلمة وهذا أمر قد يكون مفهوم سيبقى مفهوم للشهر القادم للسنة القادمة لكن ليس أمر مفهوم بشكل مفتوح لتاريخ غير منظور هذا غير صحيح لذلك نستطيع استغلال العلاقة بيننا وبين كردستان اليوم والتي تتطور إيجابياً وهناك وزراء نافذين جدا في الحكومة الاتحادية عندما يكون وزير المالية الأخ هوشيار زيباري إذا الحسابات شفافة كل شيء معروف على الأقل الأخوة الكرد يعرفون كل ما لدينا لكن نحن لا نعرف ما يجري هنا لا نعرف حجم الإنتاج لا نعرف حجم الاحتياطات لا نعرف حجم الصادرات لا نعرف لمن يصدر لا نعرف يجب أن ننهي هذه المسائل بطريقة نصبح شفافين للجميع ونتعامل بشكل واضح حتى نحل هذه المشاكل لمصلحة الجميع أنا واثق كردستان سيستفاد من هذه الاتفاقات والعراق كله سيستفاد من هذه العلاقات والمدخل إلى ذلك هو الأزمة الماضية والحلول الحاضرة الموضوعة الاتفاق الأول ثم الاتفاق الثالث ثم ما يجب أن نذهب إليه في اتفاق الثاني ثم يجب أن نذهب إليه في اتفاق الثالث لحسم هذه المسألة في إطار قانون النفط والغاز في إطار قانون الموارد المالية في إطار عدة قوانين ثلاث قوانين الآن موضوعة في مجلس الوزراء في الاجتماع الماضي يوم الثلاثاء الماضي قبل البارحة تناقشنا في هذا الأمر وأصبحنا على عتبة طرح هذا الموضوع 
في مجلس الوزراء ثم نأتي أيضا إلى الإخوة في الإقليم ونذهب إلى الإخوة في المحافظات لنضع اللمسات الأخيرة إذا اتفقنا نرسله سريعا إلى البرلمان لتشكيل الإطار التشريعي والقانوني لهذه المسألة الحساسة والتي يعتمد عليها العراق لأن تعرفون النفط هو شيء حساس وأساس في الاقتصاد العراقي وفي حتى في أستطيع أن أقول وجود العراق كدولة أهمية النفط في الدفاع عن نفسه عبر الموارد التي يقدمها أشكرك أشكرك شكرا جزيلا سعادة الوزير uh, moving on to uh, uh, Minister Hawami, of course, you're welcome to uh, comment on some of the points that uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Adel made, especially about... I'm just, I'm about I'm I'm just I'm <laughs> But I would like to ask you two quick questions, uh, Minister Hawami. One, um, give, given the recent experience and the very nascent experience of, of Kurdish uh, energy industry, do you think that energy independence is a realistic and appropriate goal for the KRG? And, uh, or should we be uh, thinking more in terms of regional integration? Then my second question. Think of Soleimani Forum 13, 10 years from now, when the panel has more gray hair. What is your hope and vision for an enduring legal framework between KRG and Baghdad? Well, uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, you you're thank you very much today. for as more of political questions, or somebody else will answer that probably. Um, I will uh, intend to build uh, more on my colleague's presentation, uh, hopefully complement and consistent what he said. But uh, first of all, dear ministers, colleagues, and welcome to Kurdistan, and Gagbaran, uh, thanks for inviting me to this. Uh, I try to focus on really technical issues and the facts. And I let you people here be the fair judge whether KRG is honoring his agreement or not. And let you be the fair analyst based on the numbers distributed earlier on and all the facts the minister said. I don't dispute on certain numbers because we, our source of the numbers are the same. They all come from Jehan. So let you look at the agreement we reach and where we are, and hopefully, if we have disagreements, we resolve them, and hopefully we move on with this agreement because it's a big achievement for Iraq. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I left this distributed in English and Kurdish so you can consult and analyze it later on, and also it's on our website, and we are proud of the accuracy of it. <coughs> let me give a little background uh, of the difficulties faced in Kurdistan region. Of course, you all heard about the attacks of uh, Daesh, the influx of refugees, and these issues were dealt with and are being dealt with in different panels. I intend to cut, uh, deal with the budgetary, particularly with the oil implication uh, side of it, and of course, naturally, the reduction in the oil price, which is affecting all of us in Iraq, not just the Kurdistan region. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the essential stability that we actually are achieving here or are trying to achieve is the steps led to the budgetary agreement of 2015. And as my colleague said, actually started from goodwill when he became a minister. We actually, in November, we agreed to start some cooperation by supplying some oil to the federal government, to SOMO in Jehan, in exchange for $500 million for the last quarter of 2014. That's my recollection, and that's a recollection of all the people on our side. Unfortunately, uh, well, we did adhere to the 150,000 bucks a day for all the days available from the day we started, and we received, thank you, 200, uh, two, two times 500, but we did not receive the third one. At that time, we started talking about the budget, and we were advised by the Prime Minister, let's agree the budget, and hopefully within all of that, everything gets resolved. So we went quiet on the 500, nobody raised it anymore. We went to the discussion of the budgetary agreement. And as my colleague said, yes, it was uh, early December, we agreed 
the best way forward is actually to cooperate uh, on Kirkuk as well as Kurdistan production. Kirkuk naturally was stranded oil, was not used to Iraq, and was actually a loss to be left in the ground. And we had, fortunately, a new pipeline built. It was a natural thing to do to cooperate to get that stranded oil to the market, which through that we get the share of the budget because we are all benefiting from the federal budget. Second, we agreed also to add to that 250,000 barrels per day, as Dr. Abdel Mahdi said, from the fields under the control of Kurdistan regional government. That was the essence of the big picture for the budget. But of course, as most technical people know, and my colleague actually cited it, when you agree on a number, it's not an absolute number every day has to be. That is a number that you expect it to average out in the financial year. And indeed, that is the way Iraq budgets itself, uh, even without Kurdistan. You don't expect to produce 550 every day. But you expect to adhere to that average, bearing some force majeure events, war, God forbid, some other disasters. So the principles was agreed, a draft budget without the usual punishments of the prior years went to the cabinet, and I think became the source of the document for discussion. The first week of January, we had two, three days of shutdown in Jehan, interruption of pipelines, but we continued with 150,000 barrels a day of the prior year, and of course we were intended to honor the budgetary agreement. By the 8th of January, we had some comments from the, my colleague and his um, officials that we are not supplying enough. So actually, I went to Baghdad. I want to be factual on this. It's the reason I'm saying this. I went to Baghdad. We met in His Excellency's office with his uh, technical support team, his deputy minister, head of SOMA. And we actually spent four and a half hours and a good lunch to discuss, to discuss the common issues that what can we do together? The issues were very clear. We cannot just take this out, put in the pipeline. Needs some additional infrastructure for Kirkuk and for Kurdistan. For Kurdistan, we had, for Kurdistan, we had issues to do with the bottlenecks within Kurdistan region, uh, lack of pumps, and some metering issues we had to deal with. On the Kirkuk side, there was some new pipeline or pipelines to be revitalized to get the oil across to be put into the new pipeline of Kurdistan. The aim of that, within the three months, within three months to sort out the bottlenecks, some of them are on our expense, some of them are federal governments, some are joined, and then the oil production and export will boost after March, i.e. in April. We are adhering to that program, and that was agreed, and in fact, it was agreed that the first three months of the year, I still have a handwritten note from my colleague and I wrote it myself so that we don't actually leave any doubt, we will be doing at best 375,000 barrels, not 550, just simply there are not enough pumps, there was not enough pipelines, there are not enough metering, all of those reasons, but we also expected while we build the infrastructure three months later, we will eventually exceed the 550 so that through the year we average out at 550. And I left his good office with that understanding. I came back to Arbil, took another week or so, cabinet met and some noises coming to the ministry and he had to deal with it. And doctor came for another purpose to Arbil and we met again, let us deal with these issues, see why people have doubts. So I was actually forced, not forced, but in order to help his predicament and our predicament in Kurdistan to get the doubters on board that we are committed to this agreement, committed to this intended budget. I produce actually a detailed daily supply from 23rd of January till 31st of December. What should SOMO expect from this 500,000 and how do we arrive at 550? I recall very much, I gave my third revision of the document to Dr. Adel before he was departing to uh, airport. And the average was working out to be 548,000 barrels per day. And he looked at me, he said, actually, this fiddle, do something so it's 550, so people don't question anymore. I actually went back, I said, you go to airport, I amend the document, and I send it to you. I actually send it, and it was, I think, Dr. Barham 
might have been at the airport saying goodbye to Dr. Adil. Then the document was handed over, which is what I am presenting here. And so far, we don't have any dispute on that because he was reading my table. And therefore, let us say, then what is, is there something going wrong? I say no. If I go by that table, I add up the numbers from 23rd. It gave me a number for the first two months. I've done the sums on a monthly, two-month basis. Uh, so if I do the same days, probably work out as uh, Your Excellency's numbers, no problem. I've done the two-month figures. And if I take those two-month figures and average out for those two months against the table, but bearing into consideration the following. In reality, in the real world, there are technical issues, problem issues, not under the control Ministry of Oil or some or mine. These are terrorism acts, pipeline typing in Turkey, power supply cuts, and we have shutdowns approximately, and the facts are known to Somo and to me. These are the same information. We have something like 15 to 17 percent shutdowns whereby flow cannot go. My capacity is limited, so if I do 17 percent, I can only pump 85 percent. That is all I can do. So if I account for that, the balance I supplied versus the table are 97 percent. My friends, reasonable people, 97 percent is in, in oil world is more than 100 percent. Is people count it as achievement, as delivery. So what I'm trying to say, our commitment has been real. Has been, we've been fighting for this agreement because this is an agreement we dreamt of. We wanted it. I was actually sponsoring this agreement, left by center together, politicians to understand the numbers so they can agree. So having spent eight years of my time in this business, this is a big achievement for me personally even. So that is, therefore, I'm looking for the success of it. What puzzles me in this? Minister Harami. Okay, what puzzles me in this is, is the following. Time. Okay, our agreement was a budgetary agreement led to these explanations, the table I described, the meeting of 8th of January, and therefore with all of that background, which was finished by 23rd of January, 29th of January, the budget was voted on. Everybody knew what they were getting married to. And the budget went through based on that understanding, those tables, those commitments between both parties. We committed to that. We never agreed. People might agree now if they want to, but as far as I know, we agreed this, compens this oil program against this budget. This is the budget, and the budget indeed, Article 1, indeed Article 1 of the budget it says that. It says this is the commitment of the parties, of the KRG particularly on oil supply, and in Article, Article um, 11 third, it says if either party basically not fulfilling those obligations, the other party has the right to go away, walk away from the agreement. This is a budgetary agreement. It's written in law. So the negotiation of various stages we discussed became one more minute I finish, it became a law. And reasonable people, what I am trying to say, Okay, I've done that. Let us assume even my 15% doesn't count. But Dr. Adel Abimadi was there himself. Dr. Sherestani, my friend, was there. And the Prime Minister, when I presented these shutdowns, he said, these are force majeure events. We all understand them. Force majeure means nobody is liable for it. Therefore, you have to include it. So even if you take it out, okay, I'm 85% achieving. Why am I getting in three months? $200 million versus $3.6 billion. Can somebody please explain to the Kurdish people, to the leaders of Kurdish people, to the politicians in Kurdistan, why we still get in punishments? And this is basically a very, very, very negative thing. Where we all trying to build on this policy, we were hoping that this will create the foundation so that the difficult issues have been outstanding between us for seven, eight years, which is basically the oil law, the, the rights of export, uh, budget of 2014, all of these claims or counterclaims can be eased into an agreement. But if we started the year on the footing, where three months we're facing dies and we haven't paid the wages, how can you create the goodwill? I leave you with that thought. Ladies and gentlemen, I answer any questions, but I hope we get out of this form 
we all look at each other and say, what is going wrong? Because I don't see, I don't understand. Having made all this effort between us and with the new government, with everybody trying to reunite, and somebody is trying to wreck it somewhere. I don't understand. It's not us. I assure you, it's not us. We committed. My prime minister committed. My parliament is committed. My president is committed. I met with all political party leaders. Everybody was trying to find one more go at this agreement and make sure it works. But the answer is, if we continue receiving this dribble amount of money, what will happen with the future of Thank you. this relationship? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, both uh, the Federal Oil Minister and the uh, KRG uh, Minister of Natural Resources. Mr. Harami, you dished my questions. So I'm going, you, you focused on the day, you didn't ask me, you didn't answer my question about Sleep Forum 13, but I'll get back to you during the q and I'll tell you what happens next year if, you, if I don't have guns at this one. <laughs> <laughs> but I right. some comments there. Um, sure, please. Can you confine them in two minutes? Because um, my student already gave me two zeros. Two zeros? Yeah, which, which means they, they take back because I give them zeros, now they give me zeros. So, in two minutes, please. Okay, I'm this discussion in a clear way so that I can remember some of the things. And I think the President of the Minister remember some of the things in a special way, not with what he agreed to. For example, يقال أن اتفقنا على ثلاثة أشهر في 2014 وهذا غير دقيق لأن يعني الاتفاق الأول تم في 2 في 14-11 في 14-11 والاتفاق الثاني تم في الأول من الشهر الثاني عشر نعم طرح في الاجتماع لثلاثة أشهر للحظة صغيرة ثم عدنا إلى الشهرين فبالتالي احتساب أن هناك ثلاثة أشهر ودفع مقابلها مبلغ لشهرين في رأيي وأنا كشاهد وحاضر الاجتماع وآخرون حاضرين هذا الاجتماع هذا غير دقيق هذا أولا ثانيا عندما يذكر أن نحن قمنا بتسليم كل ما نستطيع أن تسليمه أنا أفهم مشاكل الإقليم وأفهم أن هناك صعوبات فنية وأفهم كل هذه الأشياء لكن هناك أرقام تتكلم ما وصل إلى جهان في شهر كانون الثاني مثلا ما وصل إلى جهان في كانون الثاني كان أين الرقم؟ نعم في كانون الثاني كان 380 ألف برميل نحن لم نستلم منها سوى 153 ألف برميل لا يقال لي أن هناك عقبات فنية وإلى آخره نعم صحيح هناك عقبات فنية لكن ما وصل إلى جهان 380 ألف برميل ما تم استلامه من قبل الحكومة الاتحادية 153 ألف برميل وقسم كبير منه معظمه 122 ألف برميل جاء من بابا قرقر جاء من بابا قرقر أي ما استلمته من باي حسن ومن آفان التي هي مناطق متنازع عليها وما تم استلامه من بقية الإقليم لا يتعدى غير كمية قليلة جدا إغراقنا في أرقام مثل هاي والتصوير أن فعلا هناك مجرد عقبات فنية لا تكفي لا تكفي لماذا دخلنا في هذه التفاصيل يا أخي هذا مسائل نفاوضها 380 ألف برميل وصلت إلى جيهان ما استلمته الحكومة 153 ألف برميل ماذا يشكل هذا الرقم أقل من 40% من الاتفاق يجب أن نكون واضحين أستمر أو أتكلم في شباط وآذار uh, Unfortunately uh, because of the limitation of time we need to move on to the final في في شباط 436 ألف برميل وصلت إلى جيهان ما تم استلامه من قبل الحكومة الاتحادية 306 ألف برميل وهذا تقدم مهم نحن استبشرنا به كثير وهنأنا أنفسنا عليه كثير وساعدنا وطورنا نقاشات داخل الحكومة لإطلاق مزيد من المبالغ لكن أيضا هنا ما جاء ما تم تسليمه من 
بابا قربر 144 ألف برميل من مجموعة 306 ألف برميل استلمها استلمتها الحكومة الاتحادية فارق كبير فيجب وضع الأرقام كل شيء في مكانه هناك عقبات صحيح نحن لا نحتسب يوم بيوم نحتسب معدل شهري ومعدل سنوي صحيح لا أحد يقول اليوم استلمت صفر أحسبه أن هذا صفر اليوم التالي والثالث أستلم خمسمائة وخمسمائة متتالي عوض يصبح المعدل ثلاثمائة وثلاثين ثلاثمائة وثلاثة وثلاثين ألف برميل هاي أمور مفهومة كنت أرجو من السيد الوزير أن لا ندخل في هذه التفاصيل لأن فيها ردود ومناقشات ومناقشات داخلية وتعطي انطباع للرأي العام كأنما نحن المسويتون أو أنتم المسؤولون والحقيقة نحن الاثنين مسؤولين أنا لا أريد لا إذا كنا سنتجادل نذهب في غرفة أخرى نذهب في غرفة أخرى إذا كنا نريد أن ندخل في جدل هذه الأرقام الرسمية التي قلت أن أنني أعتمد عليها وأنا أخذ أرقام لمعدل شهر كامل أخذ أرقام لفصل كامل وأخذ أرقام للأيام الأولى من شهر آذار فبالتالي هذه الحقيقة الإقليم أخي العزيز الإقليم يبذل كل جهد ممكن لتحقيق هذا الاتفاق أنا مع ذلك من الرئيس البرزاني أنا سمع ذلك من الأخ نيشيرفان أنا سمع ذلك من الإخوة المشاركين في الحكومة الاتحادية وأنا واثق أن الإقليم صادق في تنفيذ هذا الاتفاق صادق هناك مشاكل سابقة كما قلنا في الاجتماعات سرنا في طريق فيه كثير من الشذوذ هذا الشذوذ هذه العلاقات غير الطبيعية هذه العلاقات الخاطئة الآن يجب أن نصححها سواء كانت من الحكومة الاتحادية أو كانت من الإقليم شكرا نعم. شكرا جزيلا I think exported 100,000 more in March. You're giving me 100,000 less. It is correct. What he is saying, you exported in January even more, but you even gave me in January even more, less, less than you are exporting. May I remind His Excellency, is point number three, I think, of our agreement or in your office. It says, the parties adhere to common pricing policy in Jehan. What does that mean if I didn't have a right to export some of the oil? It was exactly designed, says you don't sell it cheap, you sell it with my price. It means you left me with some rights to sell some of the oil. That's number one. You may ask why that right was left when you are in the budget, which is a fair question. The reason for that we, in the negotiation, ladies and gentlemen, my prime minister, look at the prime minister of federal government and say, even if we have million pounds, we cannot actually do more than this. But we don't have that. The reason for it, we have borrowed a lot of money. We are bankrupt. We have borrowed a lot of money to pay the wages of the, the last nine months where the federal government cut our budget. We committed taking money from the traders taking money from them, and we committed for the next few months we have to give them this oil because I, all you give me the money to pay it back to them. Basically, I remember, I don't, I really didn't want to get to this. Dr. Abdel Mahdi himself looked at me, said, Ashti, I will not look. Let us be factual on this. This is very important to be truthful with each other because if that is a source of dispute, we should highlight it very plainly, very openly. I respect my colleague, uh, uh, Dr. Sheristan. He plainly says, you should sell all of oil somehow. Let us be frank on that. If that is the objective, saying you have no rights, then s tell that to my politicians. No problem. If they accept it, accept it. But that is the, if you say you give me all the oil, which was not part of the agreement, then that is the common part of the problem. 
please don't bring those numbers in where they were agreed to be excluded. But actually, as you know, for the 300,000 barrels in January, now we actually barely have 90,000 left we service in this debt. So basically, we're adhering, important thing, we're adhering to the numbers we agreed to supply. And let us be fair, even if we have disagreement on those, we can sit down and talk about it, but you don't have to cut my budget in order to talk about it. Thank you very much. A very heated and lively debate, but now we move on to uh, the implications of this dispute uh, for the larger economy and the financial sector of Iraq. So, uh, uh, Mr. Zabari, if I may uh, ask you, and I, in fact, before that, I'd like to make a very quick announcement. Uh, the oil uh, dimension is very complex, and I'm, I'm very uh, pleased to announce that AUIS and IRIS uh, is building a new center called Center for Development and Natural Resources. That is our contribution to the policy debate and the academic debate about uh, the development of oil and gas industry as well as what the industry means for, for this country and this region's political and economic development. So please be on the lookout for our activities and publications. Mr. Zabari, given the shocks that uh, Iraq is facing, ISIS, low oil prices, uh, the lack of a, a legal framework for the, for the energy industry. What is the Iraqi strategy for fiscal and macroeconomic stability? And of course, we already uh, are seeing warning signs of a devaluating Iraqi dinar. So if you could comment on that. And then second question is, the, the crumbling oil prices has, has showcased how vulnerable the Iraqi economy is uh, to to these shocks that Iraq itself cannot control. So these are exogenous factors that Iraq can only respond to, but our vulnerability was, was showcased in a very severe manner. So how worried should we be? And then what is the reform agenda in terms of structurally reforming the economic system and the economic institutions in order to diversify the economy as well as create a vibrant competitive economic uh, sector that's not chronically dependent on the oil sector. Thank you. Thank you. Is this a question or a statement? Two questions. <laughs> well, load it, well, obviously. Really, uh, I followed the, the debate, but you can imagine how easy my job is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But uh, we are fighters, not, not quitter. And uh, I personally believe, tomorrow? Hello? Yeah. Um, I think uh, the previous debate has a direct relevance to what we are doing to do. As you all know, Last year, Iraq was run without a budget. There was political difficulties, political breakdown between Baghdad and the KRG. There was ISIS controlling the <coughs> one third of the country. We had elections, we had change of, of government to do peacefully, let's say, and to cooperate to give hope to uh, our people that there is a way forward. Then we came to construct a budget. How on earth could you construct a budget without resolving the political differences between Baghdad and Erbil? So nobody should really claim or take credit, I've done this or that. This was a collective effort in order to include the oil exports from Kurdistan and Kirkuk to the budget. Otherwise, we would not have been able to present you with a budget. So. I think uh, the efforts we <coughs> exerted collectively with the government over the last few months has been extraordinary in terms of uh, meeting the challenges. Apart from the political differences, 
you had two more serious challenges. First, you have a high cost of your security, of your military forces, with hatchet payment, with uh, everything else to face up to, to ISIS. Secondly, the oil prices dropped by 60% almost at one stage. And your only main source of revenue was your oil export. Mm -hmm. So there was a realization from the new government, and everybody understood it. It wasn't easy, my friends, to reach to this agreement. And everybody contributed, really. In Baghdad, the KRG, the leadership, I think everybody was wise enough that this is the, in the best interest of both sides, of the country. It's a win-win uh, deal. And it showed that this country has a future. That at the end, no matter how we are divided, how uh, we are antagonistic, we can come together. Last year's atmosphere wasn't this year's atmosphere in Sulaimani Forum. Two years ago, it was another atmosphere was completely different from what we are witnessing. Because people have become more realistic, more understanding. Now, ISIS, in fact, in one sense, have united us. I mean, although they've come to take away our country, but as a challenge, believe me, they have united the Kurds, the Arab, the Shia, the Sunni, the minorities. Now they are one front in confronting them. Now, the budget law really went through a process of, of, of balancing between the needs, between the commitment, between the way this country was run as a renter state economy based on one source of revenue, and with this abandoned, overblown bureaucracy, you pay nearly four billion for only government employees, monthly. You have 147 state-owned companies mm -hmm. who are self-financing, and they are, and you have to pay them. They are not working, they are lazy. But it is an obligation zone. Previously, my government, which was I was part, every day they had a resolution to spend money, to allocation money for compensation for this and for that. And the same thing, the parliament did the same. Without any objection or checking the spending, how can I will manage to, to meet all these obligations? So that is the situation really we received when we took office with our colleague in the new government that you cannot run a government without a budget, for God's sake. Your credibility, your, <clears throat> your credit line, you don't have a credit line as a country. Mm -hmm. Up to now, you don't have a credit line for investors, for other people to trust, to believe in what you So <clears throat> the first thing was really to present this budget to include this political deal between the KRG and Baghdad, 550,000 plus 2,700 from the southern export uh, outlets. We have 3.3 million barrels a day, on average. And, and on that basis, we reduce the price of the oil from 70 to 60 to 56. And then we went on cutting the spending of all the ministries, irrespective. And the parliament also made further cuts. So we ended up with a budget that is realistic. Both the federal government and both the KRG are wrong here, with all respect to both my colleagues. Wrongs on expectations, wrongs on the mistrust. On the expectations, the KRG believe that since there is a budget law, I have to get my 17 share immediately. If I don't have the money, 
you must share with the national pot. The budget is also based on annual arrangements, not on, on a day-to-day -day basis. I will count for all your payment, but today if I cannot pay you, no. And also the federal government will say from day one, you have to, to give me 550,000 irrespective. It took us several weeks of discussions to reach an agreement. This is on average. We put it in the budget law. One day you could get 100, the other day you could get 400, the other day you could get less and so on. But on average, this is how people calculate their, their budget. So, in fact, I'm a great believer that this agreement must live, must survive because it's in the best interest of the country and of the KRG. There are no other alternatives. We know all the difficulties, the complications, and Ashti in front of all this, I promise you, I promise the KRG that the, the federal government will pay you, otherwise I will not be sitting in Baghdad. Okay. <laughs> And your rights, your shares are there, but according to what we have, believe me, I'm unable to pay, to pay the, the allocations of some of the ministries, as it should be. I've been working hard to ensure that at least I must ensure paying the salaries. But it is unfair that since the beginning of this year until now, that for my, for my government to have paid you 250 million. This is unfair. And we've said, we've raised it. And I can assure you that the bulk of these leaders here, the Iraqi leaders, also are with us on this. I can speak for each and every one of them. But believe me, we are struggling daily, daily to borrow money from <coughs> our banks from uh, treasury bills to ensure from government bonds now we are thinking to borrow from Deutsche Bank, from City Banks, uh, <clears throat> try to release some of the dead monies that we have in our system. This country is not bankrupt really, but it needs a better financial management, good governance, otherwise we have a great deal of, of on potentials. Pre-finance projects we have. Mm -hmm. Looking back at the oil contracts, increasing our revenues, our share, our revenues uh, uh, from the tax taxation, from custom tariffs, from other collections, and so on, from foreign investment, and so on. We have plans for reforms, actually. We are not dead. Believe me, we've started it. You and the KRG should start it. You have a far bigger problem than in Baghdad. Hmm. So <clears throat> in terms for the reforms, really we have a vision, we have a perspective. We should uh, d diversify our sources of revenue, but this will take time. For the first time in Iraqi history, we introduced taxation. It's a strange idea. Everything in this country is balash. service. Everything is for free. So, really there would be resistance, there would be challenges, but I think uh, we will overcome. This year will be a difficult year, mm -hmm. but there are, these reports are not true about uh, devaluing the dinar at all. Our currency is still strong. Good to hear. It is a hard currency. We have assets in the central bank. We have assets in the central bank that we are not touching them. This is keeping the inflation down, that keeping and the rate of, of the dinar, and we can borrow also. I mean, um, the country as a sovereign country has uh, a much greater outreach in terms of getting the finances. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and, <laughs> and thank you also for the uh, happy and reassuring news on the uh, Iraqi currency and the strength of the economy. Uh, moving on to uh, Mr. Rebaz Hamalan, uh, Barez, uh, who, who is the, uh, the Minister of Finance of the Kurdistan Regional Government. 
uh, I'll ask the question in Kurdish. Baraz Janabi Kak Rebaz Hamalan. I go back to Prisarek Arasi Janabi Bukam Kamiziki Lo Prisarek Le Baraz Kagosha Zavarim Kadesh Benispet Sakam Giri Aburi Kurusana. I'll pass. اگر ابوری عراق توشی قیران بو بید لکاتی که که نرخی نرخی نوت دا عوضه چون که ابوری که پشتی بستو بنوت او ابوری کروسان لانه دو جل قیرانه بید چون که للای که وابسته بنوت للای که شو وابسته ببغا و تا اوصر بخویه نیه که لانه حکمتی فیدرالی هی بید لمسلی ورگتنی قرزو دسکاری کردنی بونمونه بابن سعری صرفی دیناری عراقیه بو گرنگا ك بپرسین آیا حکمتی هرم لم قیران و چی فر بو؟ و پلانی استراتژی با چاکسازی بر دی بنگا آبولی کجیا؟ که ام ام کشی جوری لچاوکران وی بدروس کرد و آیا پلانی وزارتی بر است و پلانی حکمتی هرم بشه وی کجشتی با چاکسازی ل ل ل بواری آبولی کروسانه چیا؟ زورس فاس زورس فاس اول در مارش اما دوایی خوش ویز خون با خوش حال زنم و وزیری داره و آبوري حکمتی هری میکردستان لسیمین دیداری سلیمانی لازم کوی آمریکی لپای تختی روشن بیی آماده بم و زور سپاسی برای اسکالیکتور بر همه کم کبانگشتی کردم با ام دیداره و لیرا زنزیکا و لگال ایو جناب کو برای زو خوشیس کرد ما کی ودارم ام دی داره به توزگیک با آلوگور و گشپ هدایی دید و با چون کان لخدمتی در سری قیرانه یک لذای کان که خی عراق و کردستانی گرتو. برزان لتموزی دو هزار و چهارده کابینه هشتی حکمتی ریم کردستان لذوقی که علاوه سیاسی و آبودا که بودجه هریم بردرابو دست بکار بو. پس ام دوی مانگی داعش دوای گرتنی مصل پلاماری هریمی کردستانی داو دوای هاتنی داعشیش زیادتر لیگ میلیون و پیانصد هزار کس آواره روی لهریمی کردستان کل سوریا و لناوتش جاجا کاری تلی عراق و که خرجیشی جوری خست سرشانی حکمتی هریمی کردستان سر رای اوی که خوش مان بود جا کمان بر رابو رپورتی کی بانکی جهانی هر که تازه بلان کرده تو بس آواره کانی هریمی کردستان لصال کافیست یعنی به یک میلیار و پیان صد میلیون دولار اما وقت انجمن هرمی با کارباری نوتوگاز لحکومت هرمی کردستان با خور اخصنوی خوبانو سرچاوی ده هتکان من به جور یک دانه که سرجم ده هتکانی نوتوگاز با کاربین با پیدانی موچا که او کد که دست با کاربین دو منگ با موچا ندراو و تا استاش با میراد ما و تا دو منگ با موچا من نیاو مانگانه ای ما 850 میلیارد دینارین به مچخورانی هری میکردستان. او پاره 682 هزار ای ما فرمان بری حکومتی هری میکردستان من هیا. 650 هزار خانشین و طوری چاودیری کاملاتی و کسوکاری سربازی شیدانو کیمیابارانو انفال و چندین توجیتر لخود اگرید لو عددا. پاشان ای ما ابد به و کو برای اسکار و شهر باسی کرد لعراق لای امش به همان شوا سکیوریتی مسئله پیش مرگا مسئله آسایش مسئله وزارتی نه خوب باز امسیانه همون منگی که امش سی صاو سه میلیارد دینار یعنی اینه یعنی لواش صاو پنج میلیارد سی صاو سه میلیاری با او سیکتره ولیم کاتش هدش هم گاهی بودن لو سیکتره با خرابش که تو لبری آنها همون لبرکان شرانو نه تو این دستکاری سیکتری امنی بکن. پاش آمیه ما ده هات کانی ناوخو هریم کردستان من با برای چونی کاربری حکومت و سیکتر سرکه کانی وکو تندروستی و کاربرو پروده و شاروانی ناوخو و کاره ناوا لبد بختی عراق و کردستان کسرکی ترین سرچاو من ده هاتی نود بو ایجن الخکی دعوزی اما لمان کی دوازی دوازار و چوارده وفدی کی حکومت هریم کردستان سردانی بغداد من کرد به ممستی گفتگو لیکتی گشتن لسد دانانی بود جی دوازار و پانزا و اول یک تیک جشنش بو به یاسای بو جی دوزار و پانزا بلان آلیتی جا و جا کرد نکی و شایی که دروس کرد بو تا استا جا و جا نکراوا که ایگوی که زور خرافی دروس کرد بو لسد نادنی بشه بو جی هرین کردستان 
هو كاركي هو نريبيت ياخد سياسي ياخد بابد نبويني هل لايك بيت للاني ريكوت نكبت دونياني وباجكي خلشي عراقو خلشي هرمي كردستان يا عيتي وبتايبتيش موشا خوران وإما لحمو أو قساني أمرو كلا ياخد لفيشتوليش دكريت بتايبتي وكو خلشي هرمي كردستان وكو حكومت هرمي كردستان خموشا نازي إما پیش مرگی کردستان اما دو مانگونی و پای پیش مرگمان نیا و موچی پیش مرگمان نیا و رکوتی هولی رو بغداد لسر بنمای پیویزبونی هر دولا و بیکتریو بر جواندی هاو بش و بیسکدنی هر دولا برانبر دجمنی که هاو بش کده عشا اما اگر درگای تریشمان لبر دما والا بید بلام همو آراست کن بر بغداد و و هیوای که زور من به پیکو جیانا بوی پیویست ناکو که کام چار سب کنو بگین انجامو لم کشانه کو تاین انجام بید داعش همو عراق کانی به یک چار سیر کردو فرقی نکرد لبین یزیدی و مسیحی لنیوان شیعه و سننا لنیوان کرد و عرب و لنیوان هیچ حزب یکا به همان شیوش قیرانی دارایی روی لحریم کردستان روی لعراق کردوا و به تایبتی لحریم کردستان در درگای همو معلکان منیاوا لگورو و بچوکو همو من کم تازور لیزر من بوین اما که وزارت دارایی و عبوری به سیستم و سیاست کنیو و کردکین با در بازبون لم قیران دارایی و با ریفارم کردن در سیستم دارایی و ریفارم کردن در وزارت دارایی اما دوی رایش کردن من لگل دسته که رایش کاری که سپارن لباری دارای و آبوری ولی در ولایت نامانن لمعایی که نزدیک ده پلانی خوان بلاو دکی نوا با چاک سازی و با ریفورم کردن و و با در بازبون لام دخی که استحیری میکرد سعیت روی آبوری او و او پلانش و دو شوازه شوازی که کرد این کپیویست هند دیگر کار کن من دست دست بکن و شوازی که تیشی دلش خان که با دو سه سالی ده تو بیم پس این اما استاد اسمان کردو با وی که ده هات کان من رخ خیلی ولی گومرگو لذاری بکان ولی رسوماتی وزارت کان به شوایی که سر دمیانو و لرگای ایتیو لرگای داتا و و هر واحد خرج نافیس تکان خرج زیاد کانی که چندین سال بر روی حکومتی هریمی کردستانی گرتو کم کی نوانیو و زوریش من کم کردو تو و زوری کج برای وی کمی کی نو و هر واحد وکو برای که گوشیار باسی کرد ایمایش به همان شی و همو هول من باوی که دور کمی نوا لسرچاوی سرکی تنها نوید بید امارات دولت امارات لسرطای دروز بونیا لسدا نوید پشتی به نوید بستو بو امرو لسدا سی پشتی به بستو لتمنی گیشتا پنجا سال دوزار ویستوی که لسدا پینس پشتی به دوستی بای پیویست ایمایش چاول اولاتانی دراو سی مانو ناو چکب کینو لم سیکتری کبو اما لعنتی که نزدیک دا پاچه وی لبغداد و رزامندی من به هات ولقی بانکی ناوندی عراقی لهولی رو و دکی ناو بنای فرعی بانکی ناوندی عراق فرعی اقلیم کردستان و لجر لجر سایه بانکی مرکزی عراقی آبد و نجوا کوی است که دو بانک منه لجر وزارتی دارایی آبد. اما به پیش آن و لجر بانکی مرکزی عراقی آبد با اوی سیاستی نقدیو سیاستی مالی لیکتری جاب کی نوا. و یکی اگر گرفت جور کانی اما که امر هم عنا است بریتیا لسیولا که لبازار کانی هریمی کردستانو و لحق لناو بانک کانی هریمی کردستانی شنماو. و هر وها است گشتون تا نتیجه که شلوار لامان گیج اگر مطمئن دا وزارت یک من بنوانه ورگرت دست کن به پیدانی مچی وزارت یک لری بانک و به پی سیستمی نیو سردمی آن. و هر واحد دیوانی که تایب درست کنیم به دیوانی دلنیایی با اوی همو او کمپانیانی که لهری می کردستان هن آوانی که مالاتی هن هی آوانی که مالاتی مالاتی شنیه کاری دلنیایی اکن لکردستان ری کی خیلی آوانی با اوی لپیناو جیگر کنی سیستمی دلنیایی لهری می کردستان هر واحد پیکاری شنی با وزارت و دام دزدگانی وزارت دادنی نو سیستمی که ایتی لسر جام دام دزدگان بکار دنین وقت دست پیش یک بار دروز بونی حکمتی الکترونی برای زن هریمی کردستان زور قیرانی تی پرندوا، بلام کمتر و آنها من لرای بردو ورگرتوا. باشه که قیرانکانی استامان هوا کارکی خرابی سیستمی کارجیاری و لرای بردو داو 
استاکاتی آوا ام قیرانب کین خالی دست به کبنی چاک سازی را تقینو پشتیوانی کبدین چاک سازی لالان همو سروکاتی هرین کردستان لالان سروکاتی پارلمان کردستان لالان سروکاتی حکومت کردستان و سرجم لالان سیاسی کان بتایبتی آوانی کبجدار ملی حکومت و هر واحی پیوستی زوریش من به پشتیوانی خالشی کردستان هست. چونکه امس ام امانی که باس ما که اگر پشتیوانی چاق سازی نکن به دنیایی و هر پلانی کش من هست سر نگریت. برای زن امر قیل آن کامی قبل دوای قلت بد بنوا باید به پیوست من زنی باید گرتوی باید به پیوستی دزانی باید گرتوی ناو خویه. لحمو کات زیاتر و دبید لحیزباتی و من ملایی سیاسی و مزایدات چین در و واقع بین بینو دور کین و لشعرات. لکوتایی آن هست در اوجاری که من و کوزارتی داری و شنازی شیگور به پیش مگی کرد و سامپ کین و دعوای لبردنی آن لب کین و هر وها صلاح و صلاحشی آن بود بنیارین و هر وها سیغز و نوازی با شهید کان من دانه بنیم و هر وها آو شهیدانی که لدستی تیرور شهید بون و سپاسی خوراگری خالقی کرد و سان و متشکران و خوان باق اهل کان و بالندران و هر کسی که کین ك خوراگر بون لبرابر قیلانا و به هم قیلانا و توشی زر روزیانی شیزور بون من هیوا مایا لم روا و همو سرکد دسیاسی کانی عراق لیر آمدن امش بخیرات نیا نکین هیوا دارین امر رو بیه تدرجای شکر و پیک و بتوانین چاره سری ام قیلانا بکینو لشی عرات چین در وانه براستی خلق لوزیات رت حملی نما و من زور سپاس دانکم سپاس متنایش پس با برز رباز حملان با او خالقان گانی که او رجندی، ladies and gentlemen، it's it's very I'm very happy to hear a commitment to structural reform، especially of for the Iraqi as well as the Kurdish economies، and I and I I think we all look forward to seeing those strategies because unfortunately during times of uh, winning lotteries and, and happy times, no one thinks about reform. It's only during crises that we think of reforms. And uh, we should all be on the lookout for those strategies uh, spelled out and communicated with the wider public and, of course, the academic institutions for deliberation and sharing knowledge. Ambassador Jones, the U.S. government have been, has been uh, offering technical assistance to uh, the Iraqi government and the uh, the KRG. How do you assess uh, that assistance, and what can the what can both governments learn from uh, the recent U.S. experience uh, with with the uh, the recovery from the Great Recession? And uh, a second question, if I may, how has uh, the U.S. policy toward the Iraqi energy sector and uh, industry? Uh, has been has been changing over the years, and if you could comment on, you know, the current policy, and whether you support um, the United States, the United States supports a centralized or a decentralized approach to management and revenue generation and revenue sharing uh, in in Iraq. Thank you. Well, thank thank you very much, Bilal. And as I was sitting here, I was thinking that I would happily trade my minutes for some barrels of oil. But uh, <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Barham, for hosting us today. It's a great event. Uh, I want to commend you not only on today's conference, but on the tremendous achievement of this great university. And I'm so proud to be at the American University of Iraq in Sulaymaniyah. So thank you all, and thank you, uh, uh, everyone who's put this conference together. It's a privilege to be here also with this uh, distinguished panel of dedicated public servants. Uh, really, it's an honor to work with these people every day. Uh, you know, it's, it's important to remember that Although the United States just last week celebrated six years of stock market in expansion, um, before, you know, in 2007 and 8, we went through what is called in the United States the Great Recession. And our economy shrank by 3%. Uh, the stock market dropped by over 50%. Real estate values in some communities bottomed out. You know, there were gated communities that were completely abandoned, coyotes walking around uh, luxury villas. It was really a, a terrible time for the United States. Uh, unemployment increased. And uh, the, the country really faced a, a terrific crisis. And although it's hard to compare the, the crisis that the United States went through to what's going through here, mm -hmm. I think there are lessons that can be drawn. And so look at what the United States did. 
Uh, the first thing we did was we doubled down in terms of our private sector. We relied on our private sector to pull us out of this great recession. Um, we reinvested in our automobile industry, we bailed out our banks, we, we recovered our financial sector, and in general we, we set out to make sure that the private sector would, would recover and be able to recreate the jobs that it had lost. But we also expanded our social safety net, and this is sometimes forgotten. We, we sustained our unemployment benefits and many, many thousands of people who had been in the, uh, in the employment, uh, who had had jobs, were able to sustain their, uh, their families uh, through unemployment benefits for uh, an extended period of time. We also adopted financial sector reform, and this was a very difficult, controversial process that many people thought would not be possible with our political, with the, the political divisions in our system. Um, we held our banks accountable. And uh, the banking sector in the United States was fined several billions of dollars in penalties for criminal conduct and for fraud and for other civil infractions. Um, and, so, um, and so now, as I said, uh, six years later, you know, we've now had uh, thir 13 months of job growth. Uh, unemployment is now less than 5.5% in the United States. Rahm Emanuel, the president's uh, chief of staff in the first administration, famously said, you should never let a crisis go to waste. And I think that that's, there's an opportunity in this, and I was so happy to hear what His Excellency the Minister of Finance was saying about uh, the prospects for Iraq in this same regard. Um, I think many people on the panels throughout the course of the day have predicted and seen forward to, to the defeat of Daesh. De Daesh will be defeated. Uh, the United States airstrikes, the coalition airstrikes, have had a devastating effect on Daesh. The fighting that is going on now is not the fighting that we saw last October. Daesh is being reduced to an army of IEDs and snipers, and they're rapidly retreating across the country. And not only in Tikrit, as we've seen today, but also in Kirkuk, where the Pesh have fought valiantly in the last few days, and also out in Baghdadi in Western Anbar, where the, um, uh, where the 7th Iraqi Army and Sunni tribal fighters have combined to retake uh, important territory there. So Daesh is on its heels. It's going to be defeated. And I think we can look forward to a time when we can think about a normal economy and rebuilding what's been lost here in Iraq. And for us, we've got sort of three R's, reconstruction, reform, and reconciliation. And I think it's useful to think about what the synergies are between these three elements, reconstruction, reconciliation, and reform. On re reconstruction, um, at the uh, first coalition meeting in Brussels a few months ago, there was a discussion about establishing an international fund to support Iraq on reconstruction. And at that time, Secretary Kerry said, that this is a fund that the United States would be pleased to support. And we also hope that other states, especially Gulf states, will be in a position to support this fund to rebuild the areas that have been destroyed by Daesh. Reform, I think His Excellency spoke about the need to expand the economy. I think as long as, as, long as oil revenues represent 95% of the Iraqi budget, and are providing the lion's shares of salaries and livelihoods um, also through subsidies, you know, you have, a, you have a zero sum game. The pie is going to be limited, and the participants in the system are always going to be competing for that limited pie. But if you open up to the private sector, if you allow private sector forces to take advantage of the tremendous opportunities that are in this country, you can expand the pie to a point where it's no longer a zero-sum game, where um, you can take advantage, where there'll be multiple opportunities at multiple levels for businesses and for government to improve the lot of the people. And of course, all this comes through reform. And, uh, I, you can see, um, I can see you're not going to take my offer for minutes for oil, but let me just finish by saying the United States wants to be an economic partner with Iraq. 
And we especially want to be uh, a private sector investment and business partner with Iraq. You know, I think we've seen the tremendous benefit of the United States as a security partner here in the last few months. But that's nothing compared to the potential of what U.S. private sector investment, technology, and trade can bring to Iraq in terms of growing jobs, in, in terms of creating new opportunities. And, 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 and in an expanding pie, I think this creates space for greater political reconciliation. Because then it's not a zero-sum game. Then we're not competing for what is essentially a limited pie uh, based on oil revenues, no matter what the price of oil is. So uh, I think that His Excellency the Prime Minister, Haider Abadi, has already set this tone. In Davos, he gave a brilliant speech promoting reform. He talked about uh, where Iraq stands on uh, the World Bank Index. It's only, I think, um, it's a 156 out of 189. And on the Transparency Index, it's 170 out of 175. These are certainly numbers that can be improved mm -hmm. based on the initiatives of reforms that Hoshar is talking about today. And as you bring those numbers down, you're going to see American firms streaming in because people see the opportunities here. And there's a tremendous affection for Iraq in the United States. Many Americans have now passed through the United States in the last decade. You see a lot of Americans here Ken Pollack talking uh, with great affection about uh, what's going on here. My friend Ali Kaderi, who worked here longer than any other US official. There's a lot of engagement and excitement for what can happen in this country. And it, I think the best way for that to happen is by opening up the private sector, creating investment opportunities, affording greater transparency, and um, and really encouraging people in Iraq to take advantages of the international opportunities that are awaiting you, not only in the oil sector, but in the agricultural sector, in infrastructure, and in uh, agriculture and other areas, healthcare. And I think, again, we can use this impetus of an international initiative to support reconstruction in the areas uh, destroyed by Daesh to start to build towards that goal. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ambassador. Yes, Bilal. Ben, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, well, I'd like to thank uh, AUIS uh, and Bilal uh, and uh, everyone here for inviting me onto this panel. Um, I think what I would like to do is to address those in the audience who are not steeped in the details of Iraqi oil and provide a little bit of context which might help uh, illuminate some of the discussions that uh, were going on earlier. Uh, so I think the first thing that is useful to observe is that Iraq's oil disputes, in my view, are rooted in a more fundamental question that goes beyond oil, and that is, how do you balance the powers of the state? Uh, of course, the Constitution outlines a, a federal structure for the Iraqi state, uh, and, and many of the authors of the Constitution are in this room or, or just left. And uh, I think that what those authors would, would agree with me in saying is that the way to get a Constitution passed is deliberately to leave some things vague. Uh, and the Constitution does this. Uh, it is open to interpretation. And it specifically tasks the Iraqi parliament with passing laws that put flesh on the bones of the Constitution, including an oil law. Uh, and one of the problems in Iraq, and one of the reasons for the current disputes, and also a symptom of the current disputes, is the fact that all efforts since 2007 to pass an oil law have failed. And then the question, naturally, is why? Again, in my view, as a dispassionate analyst, uh, I see different core interests in the Iraqi federal government and in the KRG. Uh, in the KRG, I think the overriding imperative is the principle of self-determination uh, and perhaps even an aspiration someday for an independent state. And I think that this, this imperative and this aspiration is understandable given 
the long history that Iraqi Kurds have had dealing with centralized governments in Baghdad. Uh, by the same token, I think that the overriding imperative on the federal government side with respect to the oil disputes is anxiety over the potential fracturing of the country. And I'm not just talking about what if the KRG were to break away. I think it's also an anxiety rooted in what happens if we set this precedent. What happens to Basra? What happens to Dikar? What happens to Misan? So when uh, oil legislation has come very close to balancing these interests, it's, it's always fallen apart because they've been in some kind of fundamental conflict. Uh, we, we hear leaders oftentimes say that uh, the disagreements are over technicalities. Uh, but when technicalities affect who controls the flow of oil and who controls the flow of revenue, then these become political wedges. Because in a state where all income, or all, nearly all income, comes from oil, the control of oil and the control of that revenue transfers naturally to power. So, absent a political resolution uh, and in the midst of differing interpretations of the Iraqi constitution, which have not been authoritatively resolved, we've seen two oil sectors grow in Iraq. Uh, until recently, it seemed that the KRG was on a very swift course toward economic, if not political, independence. Uh, of course, this, I'm referring to the construction of the pipeline to Turkey and the energy agreement with Turkey that has uh, facilitated uh, autonomous KRG oil exports. But recently, we've seen uh, two crises, a uh, security crisis and a financial crisis, have brought Baghdad and the KRG back together. And this is the impetus for uh, the budget deal that uh, the ministers were talking about earlier. The heart of this deal, again in my view, is an equation of simple mutual interest. There are oil fields in Kirkuk that have been locked in because Daesh destroyed the Iraq-Turkey pipeline that used to bring that oil to market. And the KRG now has a pipeline, a functioning pipeline to Turkey. So therefore, if the two sides work together, you have hundreds of thousands of barrels per day, more of oil, uh, of oil sales, which creates more revenue for everyone. And that's a, a good basis for cooperation. Uh, going forward, I think there are two sets of challenges, one in the very short term and one in the long term. The short term challenges, I think we've heard a little bit about already, but uh, I'll try to boil them down very briefly. Uh, essentially, it is, do the two sides agree on a common interpretation of the deal that is outlined in the 2015 Iraqi budget? Uh, and in my mind, this also boils down to two sub-questions. First, for the purposes of this budget law, do the Bayhassan field and the Ivana Dome of the Kirkuk field count as KRG production or federal production? And I think depending on how you answer that question, you will either agree with uh, Dr. Adel's interpretation of uh, his calculations or Dr. Ashti's. Um, the second question is, uh, can the KRG export autonomously in surplus of their budget commitment without a financial penalty? And that is a a, a step further down the road, but I think also is, is going to be a relevant question. In the longer term, I think the question is, what happens when this temporary equation of mutual interests changes? Mm -hmm. So we can imagine a couple of scenarios that would cause this to happen. One is that the ITP is able to come back online, and the federal government no longer needs the KRG pipeline to get Kirkuk oil to market. Another is that the price of oil rebounds, that KRG production continues to grow, and that the KRG can replace the Baghdad budget share with its own autonomous oil sales. So if these conditions for temporary cooperation now disappear, is it possible to construct a framework, an oil and revenue sharing law, uh, or a suite of legislation, that balances 
the Kurdish imperative for self-determination on the one hand, and Baghdad's desire to ensure the unity of the country on the other hand? And if so, how? Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to open it up to Q&A. But before we do that, what a fantastic panel. Okay, we have 10 minutes for Q&A? Okay, I'm sure many in the audience will be unhappy about that. Okay, Dr. Ray. Can we get the mics, please? Mics. Well, thanks uh, to the panelists for the provocative and candid. Short and sweet, Dr. Loy. Yeah, the, I don't have a question. I have a, a, a quick intervention, if I may. Uh, just on the deals and why they are keep failing since 2006 until now, and if you have a deal next week, it will definitely fail, and I can bet my uh, money on that. All these, fee all these deals are based on wrong assumptions, mm -hmm. based on uh, wrong interpretations. Wrong assumptions in a way that, um, number one, uh, pr Baghdad would expect maximum production without paying attention to possible hiccups from the KRG production side. While the KRG expects maximum production from Baghdad to maintain that production flow. And all of them, all partners of the federal government, including the, the uh, Kurdish factions, mm -hmm. uh, they agreed a budget that is based on, on the wrong factors. $56 per barrel, when the average price for January is 41. We are already short $15. 3.3 uh, million, uh, 3 .3 million uh, barrels per day on average, when uh, production fell uh, at least 300 from the south and, and uh, 300 from the north. If we are assuming the, 20, uh, the deficit of this year is 20 billion US dollars, I can assure you if we maintain whatever has been agreed on the spending, we can widen that deficit to 40 billion and that deficit will become a national debt and bankrupt uh, hitting the government. What I'm trying to say that we need to move from political deals made between political elites mm -hmm. into institutional and constitutional resolve. The Federal Oil and Gas Council, and this is not another committee, the Federal Oil and Gas Council need to be established and to include all the producers and the regulator as soon as possible. You don't need to wait for the oil and gas law to pass. You can, you can, you can reconfigure it once it's passed, but at least have the Council of Ministers uh, to mandate that institution. At the moment, our federal state is on paper, but when it comes in practice, it, we are a central state, and here where we have the conflict. The other thing, when it comes to reform, Iraq spending about 15 billion US dollars on subsidies. Uh, Iraq is failing, especially from the south, in, in not monetizing the, 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 the flared gas that is costing Iraq, including the substitute of the fuel, around 15 billion US dollars. The uh -huh. KRG, on the other hand, is failing to adopt a viable uh, uh, gas and power policy, paying 3 billion US dollars per annum for liquid fuel and delaying development of gas. So this is in, in short that we, are, we don't have a financial crisis. We have a mismanagement of our finances. Our budget back in 2004 was 19.5 billion US dollars. Today, even if based on, if we base it on $45 per barrel, we're still above 40 billion, that's twice. But the population did not increase more than 10%. So we need to resolve this financial management. We are not a poor country. We are just bad managers of our finances. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll take, um questions and then uh, we will allow the panel to answer and then we will adjourn, uh, if you don't mind. General. First of all, it's just great to see four such competent uh, ministers and what a terrific session that was and thanks very much, Ambassador, for all that you continue to do here as you're trying to foster the political harmony and discussion that's so important to the way ahead. Um, a very specific question, uh, once the uh, Saladin province is cleared, uh, once Beji is repaired, uh, do you envision pumping a certain amount of crude oil uh, from the Kirkuk fields back down to Beji for refined products again? Thank you. Um, would you like to uh, answer the question right away? I didn't hear the last two words. I was busy writing notes. Uh, flow to resume when Salah 
Okay, 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 fine. Now? You can offer a, a very quick answer because that's a very pointed and short question. Maybe, oh. maybe I can answer. Okay, let's, let's, let's agree with the, with, the, uh, with the original plan. Okay. Pardon me? Later, later. I will, the, okay. I will answer. Okay, I'll, I'll collect the, uh, the questions and then we'll allow for, for Q&A. Uh, Mohammed. Zor spas. Pesiari akam bo janabi kaku shiara. Actually, can I have one question, please? Okay. Okay. Just one. Zor kurten. Janab tan metmana le neo bjarde siyasi. Nukhbe siyasi le araq darach astek dada binen. Pesiari duan shun bo kag Adil Abdul Mahdiya. Janab basi binat nani metmana tkert. Aye ba bo shuni baras tan metmana binat nani metmana le araq. Pewisti baziyatir le guftarnia. ناردنی بودجه هرم هنگامی که ایجابی نبی با بنیات نانی مطمئن لانه و بچرده سیاسی هرم و بچرده سیاسی بغداد سپاس. Thank you. Let's look to the side. How about the guy, the gentleman in the green shirt? زور سپاس. دو پرسیاری زور کرد. پرسیاری کم با کار کرباس. بریار بو حکومت هرمیش پیوست به با با بریاری بغداد. که بعد بخره تسر توار سектор لکودسان دهو کارتی حکومت هریمی کودسان رازینیه لکات اگر تو باس لو که هریمی کودسان برو آبودی سر بخوار و پرسیار دوام بابارس آشتی هورامی باسی وی کرد که زور شانزیه که با شفافیت ل وزارت هکیدا اکرت مامل رکوت نامی نوتی نوان حکومت هریمو ترشی که او پنجاه سال مرکز آتشی تعداد زور سپاس. Let's, uh, yes, sir. The gentleman in the red tie. Kurdistan. Kurdistan. و جمعان ابی امانع با سلف کن. نازم باسی هیچ قطاع خاص نکر که امحمو قطاع خاصه های ل کردستان و ل عراق هیچ احتمامی که بی نیل او و کلی پرایفیت سیکتریک زیال صاد و صا که کارو کارمندی های. آیا احتمام به قطاع خاص بیاری باشتر نیه و جلوی امحمو فرمان بر. زور سپاس. سپاس. زور سپاس. I'm going to take a question from a student this time, because I do uh, teach a course on petrostates. So the, the, oh yes, Mahmoud. Uh, I'm a senior student here at the American University. I have a question for the US ambassador. Who is right, Baghdad or Erbil? <laughs> <laughs> Who's right, Who's? Baghdad or Erbil? Who is right, Baghdad or Erbil? All right. How about we take uh, one more, also, also from the home front? Yes? Right in the back. The lady in the back. That will be uh, the last question, because I already have uh, five, and that's number six. Hello. Uh, my question is for Mr. Ashti Haurami. Um, yes, we have uh, a lot of political issues right now, but don't you think it's better to cooperate more with Baghdad so we end the problem of financial issues uh, that the KRG is going through, especially with applying taxes when people already are not receiving their salaries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have six questions. Um, how about I just uh, recap, or would you like to uh, take one at a time? So the questions are about uh, the prospect after Salah Din is, is clear devices, uh, and then about uh, the political options for, uh, for the KRG, uh, whether uh, Baghdad, uh, which is committed to building trust, should start uh, improving that trust by sending the budget. And, uh, and then there was a question about four sectors of the economy. You did not point out what the sectors were, but four sectors of the economy that the KRG uh, promised to, uh, to invest in and promote in the, as, a, as a part of a diversification of revenue sources strategy. A question for uh, Minister Harami about uh, transparency of the deal between KRG and Turkey, um, the private sector, and then of course a question to Ambassador Jones about who is right, and then uh, cooperation with Baghdad. 
So why don't I uh, go through the same order and allow you uh, each uh, to answer the questions as well as give your final remarks. Doctor. شكرا جزيلا. طبعا. أولا حقيقة أنا أحيي وأرحب هذه الروح الوثابة للجميع وهذا الصدق والصراحة وأنا شخصيا فخور أنني ساهمت في صناعة هذا الاتفاق بين أربيل وبغداد وكان يحتاج إلى جهد كبير وعمل ضد أغلبية ساحقة كانت حقيقة لا ترغب في الوصول إلى هذا الاتفاق وأقول بصراحة اتفاق مع مشاكل أفضل من مشاكل بدون اتفاق مشاكل بدون اتفاق فيه أذى وخراب كبير والمشاكل الأمر طبيعي والاعتراضات أمر طبيعي والحسابات أمر طبيعي وما يتصوره كل طرف أمر طبيعي لكننا نسير إلى تعزيز هذا الاتفاق اليوم الجميع الجميع متفق أن الاتفاق كان إنجاز مهم للعراق ويجب المضي به قدما ويجب تجاوز كل السلبيات الموجودة أمام الاتفاق وكما ذكرنا هناك تراكمات لأكثر من عشر سنوات من أخطاء متبادلة وإذا أردت سؤالي سؤال نيابة عن بغداد أو أربيل أنا أحمل بغداد المسؤولية أكثر من أربيل لعدة عوامل أولا بغداد هي العاصمة هي التي يجب أن ترعى هي الدولة هي الحكومة الاتحادية فبالتالي عليها مسؤوليات إزاء الجميع وطالما سبب لنا هذا الموقف مشاكل في العراق عموما وعدم تفهم فبالتالي الحكومة يجب أن تتحمل المسؤوليات أكثر مما تحملته سابقا ويجب أن لا تفكر بعقلية الحكومة المركزية السابقة وأن ترعى جميع أطراف الشعب العراقي بدون استثناء وبدون أي تمييز هناك بعض الأطروحات أن وهي صحيحة جدا والكل يرددها الحل هو في الذهاب إلى القطاع الخاص وهذا صحيح لأن المشكلة في العراق ليست فقط ال 95% موازنة تعتمد على أسعار النفط لكن في العراق انتهى كل شيء غير النفط نحن لم يعد لدينا صناعة لم يعد لدينا زراعة لم تعد لدينا خدمات في عملية تاريخية في historical process أممت الأرض ثم أممت المعامل ثم أممت المصارف ثم أممت التجارة الخارجية والداخلية وأصبح كل شيء بيد الدولة لذلك هناك تناقض في أحيان كثيرة عندما نطرح الحلول نحن نطرح حل وهو صحيح من الناحية النظرية لكن نعطيه لدولة لدولة تربت في داخلها ما أسميه إقطاعات إدارية هي بالتعريف الأول ضد هذه الحلول فهي أول من يتآمر عبر قوانين وتراكمات وتشريعات وثقافة وعادات عمل أول من يتآمر على هذه الحلول لأن مصالحها هي في البقاء في هذه الدولة الريعية هو في البقاء هو في البقاء كدولة تعتمد أساسا على موارد النفط ولا تعتمد على القطاعات الحقيقية في الإنتاج لأن القطاعات الحقيقية في الإنتاج في الحقيقة توزع المنافع وتوزع الأرباح بشكل أكثر إنصافا من الدولة التي ترشي هذا أو ترشي ذاك أو الكل يصبحون عيال الدولة وتتحول الدولة إلى دولة رعاية اجتماعية وليس إلى دولة خدمة عامة وفي الحقيقة أن هذا الاحتكار للدولة للاقتصاد هو أيضا السبب الأساس في تطور الاستبداد والدكتاتورية في العراق فهما وجهان لعملة واحدة عندما يحتكر الاقتصاد تحتكر السياسة فبالتالي المقترحات صحيحة نحن قبل أسابيع ونحن نناقش في مجلس الوزراء الحلول والكل اليوم يتفق أن الذهاب إلى القطاع الخاص هو الحل لكن في اليوم الثاني تصدر من الوزراء تعليمات وتصدر تفسير لقوانين إعادة وإعادة إنتاج لكل ما تصنعه الدولة خلال الخمسين سنة الماضية لكل ما كانت تصلحه الدولة خلال الخمسين سنة الماضية دكتور تعطني إذا ما الحل يعني إذا الحكومة ما تقدر تحل المشكلة نعم. فأين الحل؟, الحل بمثل هذه النخب نعم. الحل أن القوى السياسية فعلا تتبنى فلسفة موحدة مشتركة 
تتفق عليها ولا تعتمد على التشريعات السابقة التي تنتج الاحتكار وتنتج الاعتماد الكل على النفط وتفرغ وتولد الدولة الريعية نعم إذا تقدمنا في بيجي وتقدمنا في صلاح الدين وأصبحت المنطقة آمنة تعرف جنرال أن بيجي لم تسقط بيد الإرهاب لكن ما كان محيط في بيجي لم يكن آمن وبالتالي لم يكن بالإمكان استخدام منشآت بيجي الآن إذا أصبحت المنطقة آمنة بالتأكيد بيجي هو نصف إنتاج العراق من المشتقات النفطية وهو أيضا له علاقة مباشرة بإنتاج كربوك وهنا أيضا هذا سيكون عمل عظيم وتقدم عظيم في هذا المجال دفع المستحقات الإقليم حقيقة أنا لم أتكلم عن مستحقات مالية تكلمت عن مبادئ أساسية في الاتفاق عبرت عنها ولا نختلف عليها كثيرا في هذا المجال نحن سنسعى لكن نحن من المدافعين أن وكما ذكرت نحن لا نشتري النفط من كردستان نحن لا نشتري النفط من كردستان هناك مبدأ حسابي مالي نظم منذ 2004 ومنذ كنت أنا في وزارة المالية أن لكردستان 17% والسبب في ذلك أن كردستان أسست إداراتها قبل فترة طويلة من 2003 وكانت هناك إدارات وكانت هناك وزارات الصحة والتربية والتعليم وكل الوزارات الأخرى والأمن, والأمن وكل الوزارات الأخرى الرديفة والمقابلة لوزارات بغداد وبالتالي كان يجب أن ينظم مجموع تنظم نسبة مئوية تدفع من كليات الموازنة إلى أقليم كردستان واتفقنا أن تكون 17% أنا أعتقد أن ال 17% مبدأ يجب أن يحترم في كل الأحوال وهذا ما أدافع عنه في كل مكان طبعا هناك خلافات في هذا المبدأ لكن ما أعتقده أن ال 17% هو مبدأ يجب أن يحترم دائما وأنا ألوم الإخوة الكرد أن ربطوا بين ال 17% وبعض مستحقات الموازنة وكان هذا خطأ وعبرنا عنه بعدة كتابات وبعدة مقالات وفي مواقف علنية كاملة بالتأكيد فيما يخص كركوك والآبار فيها هل هي الحكومة الاتحادية هل هي الحكومة الإقليم وكيف تتأثر الاتفاقات هذا ما قلته أن في الجولة الثالثة أو في الاتفاق الثالث الذي يجب أن نذهب إليه يجب أن نذهب إلى اتفاق حاسم شامل كلي في كل شيء وفي كل ما تراكم من مشاكل العقود كيف ترتب كما حاول, كما حاول قانون النفط أن يرتب العقود كيف يجب أن تعقد الصادرات كيف تنظم هل ستكون صادرات منفصلة كيف سيتفق عليها والمناطق المتنازعة كيف, كيف أيضا سيحل وضعها لكن في كل الأحوال لا يمكن إدارة هذا الملف ببقاء هذه الأمور عالقة الإنتاج التصدير إدارة الحقول العقود إلى آخره لا يمكن الاستمرار هذه مرحلة يجب أن نعتبرها مرحلة انتقالية للانتقال من وضع كان سلبي وسيء إلى وضع نسعى جميعا أن يكون إيجابي ولمصلحة الجميع شكرا شكرا جزيلا سعادة الوزير من استهولامي شكرا جزيلا أنا خلي أتفق ويا أخوي العزيز هنا طيب الحكومة الاتحادية وموجب وزير اتحادي وزير اتحادي إحنا موافقين عندهم مسؤولية أكثر. I change back to English. Uh, as I agree with my colleague, my good colleague, um, that as a federal government, he has undisputed higher responsibility for certain things because he says in Baghdad which is the capital of all of us and likewise with my colleague on my left but may I add that responsibility includes paying the wages of my employees in Kurdistan paying the wages of the Persian Mughal who are fronting thousand kilometers fight on behalf of all of Iraq and therefore that responsibility extends beyond any doubt on the shoulders of the federal government to make sure Kurdistan doesn't suffer as a result of any dispute we may have or disagreement on oil, inshallah, we sort it out. 
I want to, and we committed, I want to re really make sure, we committed to this agreement. We committed to the oil agreement, we committed to the budget, and it hasn't worked so far. We're going to make it work. We're going to, I think, no doubt we are both committed to that. And our colleagues around us are committed to that. Yes, the agreement, I think, uh, we knew it has some common enemies, uh, or people didn't like it, but in fact we have overcome at least that stage, it became a law. Therefore, we should not be looking too much about the negative part of it, we should look at how to remedy that and how to actually make it work in the near future and in the months to come. I just want to make a comment on what Luay said on the whole thing is based on wrong assumptions. To some extent it's probably is correct because the way Iraq's budget is formed. But the remedy is not, at the moment, in this year or years to come, private sector, private sector. Of course we have to support it. But you cannot overnight engineer that. So what we have is oil. And what we have to increase is the revenue and hope uh, prices slightly adjust. I think if we give the chance to this agreement to work, we will more than compensate hmm. for the reduction in the oil price. I think we can get back to a level of volumes we could be a win-win. That is why we done the agreement. That we knew together we can be stronger and produce more. And therefore, we are not going to allow some local difficulties or temporary difficulties happen to derail it. We are both committed to that and we have to give it one more chance to make sure it works. The other thing was uh, about our agreement with um, Turkey, I think it was. It's transparent, it's agreed, it's fully um, known by everyone is functioning. We are exporting oil under that agreement. Uh, the agreement is only on pipeline flow access to the pipeline. Iraq, I think if I call, collect correctly, was 70 year agreement. So 50 years is not something like we giving something away to Turkey or we taking something away from Turkey. It's just pipeline agreements are for a long term period. And our new pipeline hopefully becomes the third pipeline for Iraq. Hopefully the three of them work together. It will be needed. An agreement is needed for that flow to go with the responsibility in, in Jehan. It's not unusual. I think to link this back to answer to your earlier question, Please. which I didn't answer, I think it's time to comment on that, is my vision for export so uh, Forum 13. is quite different from centralized economy. It's nothing to the, about federal system or Kurdistan, Baghdad. I believe the oil companies, the producers, the investors are better qualified to market export oil. So this issue, this sensitivity about attaching too much weight mm. about export is really we should actually share the away. It's part of our centralization and system that we inherited from elsewhere before. And the way I see it, oil companies in Basra will be marketing and they're getting better dollars than SOMO or getting better dollars that KRG might do it itself. So in, in the long term, I, my vision is actually I see a bunch of companies sitting in jail and selling oil, and we regulate. Iraq regulates. We regulate, make sure they sell it for the best price, and we get the best price. Thank that you. is my long-term vision. It's not about carving out mm -hmm. something for KRG versus federal government. In that case, we just divide the case between two. I believe it should go beyond that to a really real um, market economy. Real um, uh, challenge is actually how to create legis legislation to trust others can do the job for us. Like we have trusted them already, invite them to our giant fields in the south to manage it for us. So what is wrong actually also trusting them to sell it to the better refinery and get me better money. That is where we get together and we design the policy together. But I think um, the time for Oil and Gas Council was long time ago. I don't think there's time for that. If we make a real effort to make this agreement work and build on it and then move on very quickly to resolve the other long-term issues, which was the main objective we had, I believe, I firmly believe uh, that will be the future. But let me finish off by also saying we don't want to sell oil to the federal government either. It is a wrong thing to do. It's, we are neither a seller to federal government, neither they should be a buyer. But if you look at the numbers we receive for January, with your respect, we sold the oil at discount price. And it cannot go on. If it becomes like that, it becomes really a sales agreement and should not be allowed to continue. And hopefully our money for the coming months, as my colleague promised, 
chemists to remedy the situation so we can get back and focus on the infrastructure together to make that 550 become 750, becomes a million barrel for all of us. Thank you, Mr. Harami. Uh, we are very short of time, so if I may ask that we can find uh, your comments into two minutes each, please. Thank you very uh, much. No, briefly, I think there was a couple of questions <coughs> to me. One, uh, think about uh, building political confidence, if I'm not wrong, between Baghdad and the KRG. This must be done by actions, not by intentions, both sides. I mean, as long as there is a deal, there is agreement, both sides have to live up to it. Or at least to show their maximum commitment to it for that confidence built, and this is what uh, we are working on. The other point about the budget, the budget is not only the significance for the KRG, is the cash number or the amount of money we can get of that. It has political aspects, it has security dimension, it has economic, social, cultural. In fact, this is <clears throat> where it comes. It's not purely how much money. We are, I mean, I don't want to deal with the electricity. I want to deal with the electricity. I want to deal with the electricity. I want to deal with the electricity. امروش ناس بينس بيننا حفته كتك لسر ام اساسا تقريبا ام بوجيه هاتوه دا مزران دن يعني نا لسر اوهام هاتوه دا نا نا والله همو بحساب كراوا لهر دولاش جا اما بوا سبسيارا كان بنسبة امن تنكيو سباس تنكيو بالي ماتش منستر زباري بارز كاك رباز حملان فرم بالا باش بلا براست لي او برسالكرا لا سرويكا ايما فيوز بين با حكومتي بغداد وبدلنيه وما شكين العراق وهمو كارا كان ايما وهمو تشالاش كان ايما وكو حكومتي ريمي كردستان لا تشارتي وي دستور ويا ساكار فكرا وكان العراق بيت بلا طبعا همو يا ساكا بيمش رينما اي خماني في دركينو بي غونجين لا قال واقع ريمي كردستان بدلنيه او برسالي جناب تكدد لا سر او مساله ايما جسال دراسه كدني زين بغداد شلون جاب جاء كابة شعالتك إمش لجد دراسين ورين ما يفيد لكن بالنسبة أو برزش في السعر كل سعر قطاع خاص يعني ما بد من باسم كروتم إما ديواني تأمين داني أجا تأمين هبوا إلى ملاطة بدوني هاي قطاع خاص بارزرا نك نك هنا أخوي هريم كردستان بالكو هي دراو هريم كردستانيش بوي أول الأساس في جرينج كقطاع تأمين داني وهروها من القطاع كشاب باسم كروتم سباسي خوراجري بانك أهلي كان بلندرا كان همو أوريك قطاع خاص براستي إيش بقدر همو متشخوران وبقدر همو خلص يكون سان زر المدن بدل نهاية وياه بلا من حزم كل يك برسيال لا برز ك دكتور عادل عبد المهديب كم برزي فرمي إما نود لهريم يكون سان ناقرين بلا إما كأم جارهات يم ببغداد لقوا برز كجوش زر ويدا مش تنبس يوكر كمان يك حكومتي عراقي سيتر اليوم وش الصوص يتشوار ملياري سرف كردو دواي قدر كدني نفقاتي سيادي لصاحب فكي إما تشوار صونا وحود ملياره أجر أول ضمني أول شعبي وك ناك تجلس سدوان زي أو إيمش أبوا إما بمان يك تشوار صونا وحود ملياره من بوا ببهاتا إما تنها دو صوبن جامع بوها في ما يقدر دو صوبن جاكبين أو فاري برام برفروش نينا وتكيا حزم كلا ورون كي توس باستا كم ودو ميني شيء أو إما هم ما ليرف يكوين جناب اللي قال دكتور عشتي ركا وبارا ما نيم منو دكاك وشار زبالي شكا خلق داوي بارا نيم زوز وصفاس زوز وصفاس كاقرا بات حملان I'll give you the chance to maybe respond to him but I allow me to just move on Ambassador Jones of the two gentlemen who's right and who's wrong that was my student's question that's a tough question, right? I'm going to surprise you and say that they're both right. Uh-huh. And uh, let me tell you something. Um, look, this deal so far has been a great success for the government in Baghdad and also you for the mic. government here. <coughs> <coughs> You're Mike. I think, 
I think this deal has been a good measure for both the governments uh, here in Erbil, up in Erbil and in Baghdad. Um, it's brought in $1.2 billion uh, for Erbil, and uh, it's also allowed uh, the two, uh, both sides to uh, work collaboratively. Let's face it, there's more in common than there are as a difference. And we have to resolve these differences, of course, and I know that these terrific public servants will do that. But uh, all of us share an interest in combining forces to address the security threats, <laughs> but also to address the shared uh, economic crisis facing Iraq and the region. Um, you know, federalism uh, is, a, is a system that the United States has benefited from greatly. In, under federalism, you can have experiments that are tried out in one area and not in others. And then you get the benefits uh, of, of those experiments. So uh, I, I know that um, my colleagues here will continue to work together and find solutions to these problems. And of course, the United States stands ready to support this effort at every opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Ben, can I give you 30 seconds, and I'll give the last word to uh, Minister Adel. Of course. Uh, I just want to make a quick observation that the uh, oil price six, seven years ago was about the same as it is right now. Uh, and this was a huge financial shock to uh, Iraq's economy. Uh, and then when the price recovered, Iraq again began budgeting based on uh, an expectation of $90 barrel of oil. Uh, I think that there's a, a temptation in a country where there's perpetual crisis to justify stopgap measures by uh, looking at short-term priorities, uh, particularly when the easiest way to build political consensus is by spending money on the projects that various interest groups favor. Uh, but what I would say also is that uh, if we imagine an alternate reality where Iraq had been saving billions and billions of dollars rather than spending its savings over the last five years, we would be in a very different situation right now. And so I, uh, the, the lesson, I think, is to learn that uh, in, the, in the midst of a crisis is actually a very good time for both crisis management and short-term thinking and long-term thinking. And I wish you good luck. I don't envy your jobs. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mr. Uh, Adel, can you tell me the نفط والغاز ملك الشعب العراقي في كل أقاليمه ومحافظاته في الحقيقة في اجتماعات الدستور التي عديدون هنا حاضرون فيها الطرف الكردي كان من أشد المتحمسين لها وأعتقد أنه لا زال من أشد المتحمسين لها ويجب أن نتمسك بذلك لكي نمضي قدما في هذا الموضوع علينا بسرعة أن نحل مسألتين أساسيتين بغض النظر عن وجهات النظر لا نقرأ خطأ وجهة نظر بعضنا بعضنا البعض الآخر يجب أن نصل إلى حلول في الحقيقة فيما يخص الصادرات لأن بغداد ستقول هناك صادرات تخرج بدون أن نعرف كم أرقامها كم مبالغها كم إلى آخره يجب أن تنظم هذه المسألة وعندما يقول الأخ أشتي أنا وضعت رأسي وقلت الآن لا أرى أجلنا ذلك للمرحلة الثالثة لكي نحلها حتى لا نعرقل الاتفاق الذي لم يكن يتضمن مثل هذه المسائل بل كان يتضمن الاتفاق حول الموازنة أما الأمر الثاني الذي يجب أن يحل أيضا بشكل واضح وصريح أعتقد هو في موضوع المستحقات هناك خطأ كبير في حساب هذا الموضوع لدى البعض يجب الوصول إليه تناقشت أنا والسيد وزير المالية حول مفاهيم نعتقدها صحيحة في طريقة دفع هذه المستحقات بشكل صحيح يتناسب مع هذه المفاهيم ويتناسب مع النقص والثغرات الموجودة أيضا في هذه المفاهيم ونعتبرها كمرحلة انتقالية للوصول إلى حلول لكي لا ندمر الاتفاق أنا أعتقد أن المستحقات يجب أن تكون سليمة وصحيحة تعامل حكومة اتحادية مع, مع الإقليم لكن أيضا على الإقليم أن يتعامل مع الحكومة الاتحادية كحكومة اتحادية في قضايا الإنتاج وفي قضايا الصادرات لكي نصل إلى النهايات المفرحة والتي يريدها الجميع. شكرا. شكرا جزيلا سعادة الوزير. Thank you very much for coming, Mr. Jones, and thank you very much for coming and have a nice evening. شكرا.